Hello everyone. I just want to record a quick video about uh, my recently purchased Massey Ferguson 1735M. It has the DL125 front loader and a six foot bush hog. And I would like to go over it quickly because there's not many YouTube videos out there that are done by regular buyers. The, uh, several of them that I found are done by dealers. So I like to look for videos that are done by actual customers because I feel like they give a more honest opinion. So I'd like to cover some of those with you today. First thing I'd like to point out is that this comes standard with a 66 inch bucket with quick detach, just like uh, any other skid steer attachment. Uh, I shopped heavily between the Massey Ferguson and Coyote and John Deere and several other brands. And ultimately I went with the Massey, but it was for many reasons that I'll, I'll quickly cover as I go along. Um, the the third function would attach here. There is a hydraulic block behind here and it would just simply attach to the top of it and add two extra hoses that would attach to the lower bar down there and that would be your third function. This tractor comes with a more upgraded hood versus the other Masseys that has the nice headlights on them and it has a regular beams and high beam setting. The, uh, the grill guard does not come down because it doesn't need to. There's enough space for the hood to pop up. I particularly like the bucket level indicator because in order to adjust it, you just simply pull this tab and you can move this up and down to make quick adjustments to your bucket level instead of having to cut a rod off like a lot of bucket level indicators are. I really like that feature. And it's a quick detach, uh, excuse me, quick detach front loader, as you can see with the quick pins. And the front axle is very stout. It's a lot thicker than, uh, like, comparative to the 303080 that I was looking at from Deer, and even Coyote. I looked at theirs, and this is thicker than theirs as well. This this is a very heavy tractor, though. This weighs about, uh, don't quote me, but it's about 3,600 pounds. And the front li steering linkage is in the front, which I'm not. 100% fond of, but it is covered by some some uh, protective shielding. I'll bet a little thin, as you can see, I can move it. But it is pretty stout nonetheless. And as you can see from underneath the tractor, that it's got quite a good ground clearance, probably around 14 inches, give or take. I don't remember the exact stats, but um, it's also got tie down hooks, which is convenient. Some tractors don't have that. And then you pull this little latch right here and the hood pops up. And it's a metal hood, might I add. Everything's very easy to access. And you got your battery and your overflow and your coolant. And one thing I really particularly love about this engine is that it has a it has a catalytic converter or the DOC instead of a DPF filter. So there's no regions on this tractor, which is very lovely. I like that about it. And here's the ECU. And the the dipstick is located right here on the engine and you can see on the plate back there that the engine is made in Japan and I love this as well it's I find this particularly useful the fill tank uh, for the fuel filler for the diesel is right here very easy to use comes this unit comes standard with a deck mat uh, brake separate brake pedals that can be linked and you have a cruise control you can set the max speed of your hydrostat regardless of which range you're in you have a response control which is really nice so if you let off the hydrostat paddle and it's in uh, and it's in slow you can you can drift into a stop or it'll slowly accelerate and and vice versa if you put it in quick it'll stop instantly it'll accelerate instantly and it's a three range and it's indicated with a snail a turtle and a rabbit which I find kind of interesting and four-wheel drive engagement and disengagement right there I also like that the PTO has a neutral handle so you can throw it in a neutral and spin the PTO freely or and put it in gear when you need it the seat is very comfortable, very spongy, and it has the, the Massey Ferguson symbol and armrests and a seat belt, and it's weight adjustable. 
And it also has a little pull bar here so you can slide the seat in and out. And it also has a locking mechanism for the joystick, which I also like because it is mounted on the fender instead of on the loader. On the dash, you have your your hazards, your selector switch for the for the uh, you know the the dash computer screen, and you have a uh, adjustable steering column, and it has a horn, so works well. And oh, I almost forgot there. And of course, as most tractors do, they have a differential lock. And then I'm going to come around. And you'll see that the one thing I also liked about this is that the work lights come standard with metal guards on, on the M series, which is very nice because John Deere likes to charge a lot of extra money for that. I think it's around $400 is what they quoted me for just for metal shields. Or maybe that was for the light kit. And maybe it was, but it was it was still expensive. They nickel and dime you on a lot of features. One thing that I also particularly found interesting is that this has a remote PTO on-off switch. So if you set it up properly on the dash, you can actually turn your PTO on and off from here, which would be good for a uh, wood chipper or maybe even a post hole digger. That way you can kind of turn it on and off as needed if you want to, if you want to work it from the ground. Now, as you might see, that my uh, bush hog is disconnected, and I'm going to cover that in a minute. But it is this, tra I, this tractor was delivered just two days ago, and it already separated. So I got something to say about that in just a minute. But as you can see, the PTO... It has a nice big shield around it, and it is movable. This will come up even though I can't do it right now. It, it, is, it will move up if you need to pull on it really hard. It's got pinned links to, uh, for the sway bars. It's really nice. It also has telescoping links, which I also like. It's very, it's very easy to hook up any implement to this. It's got a little hook to hold the top link. You got your gearbox fill right there. Comes standard with a toolbox in the back and the typical rolled ha road hazard symbol and it also has this nice little nifty sight glass here and let's see move them around and I also want to note that this tractor is quite big for the size I spent the dealer with cash price it was they quoted me 23,500 for this and with financing price the low you know the zero interest rate it came out at 279 so I went with I went with a 5000 deposit and I got the cash price using low interest and the regular low interest so I could get the cash price and it wound up being cheaper than paying regular price at 0% interest if that if you can believe that but the quick disconnects are all located right here now I'm not particularly fond of this location cuz it's pretty close to the tires but it is a pretty stout location, and they look like they would be able to take a decent beating without taking too much damage, but just something to be mindful of. The hydrostat pedals are separated, and they're not floor mounted. They're mounted to the underneath the dash, like that too. Very nice. And it's also convenient that the fuses and diagnostics plug are right here. Super easy to access. Your parking brake is there along next to your ignition. And your hand throttle is here, along with electric PTO engagement, which you have to push down on and turn to engage. But if you just simply push down on it, it disengages without having to twist it, which is a nice safety feature. Plus the slow start, soft start PTO. It'll, whenever this is on, it will start the PTO slowly and spool up for you, so you don't have to do that with the RPMs manually. I like that a lot. And the light control is right here just like a car left and right blinkers with low and high beams and what if uh, i thought it might turn the blinkers off if you turn the wheel but it does not so you will have to turn them off manually but it's still nice that it's super easy to use just like a vehicle and all the indicators are on the dash it has indicators for four-wheel drive and and cruise control and pretty much everything you can think of as well as an in-dash fuel and and uh temperature gauge and it shows your 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 ground speed but you'll have to tell the dealer to change it to miles per hour because mine came factor with kilometers per hour and whenever they come out here tomorrow to fix what's wrong with my bush hog they're going to change it to miles per hour for me they said it's a quick fix but they have to use the computer to do it so don't forget to tell the dealer that if you do decide to get one and here is the joystick and it has draft control and it has your regular lift and dump 
Now, one thing I will mention about this is that it will not do, it will not lift and curl at the same time. You have to do one or the other. So, a minor setback, but just one thing you should consider. But it does have a, a, a regular speed a dump, and then if you go a little bit further, it clicks a little, and it'll dump extra fast. I really like that. Good for quick dumps. This is also nice that they have these little knobs here to control it. I know most of the other tractors I looked at had had a feature just like it, but it's just nice to point out that it, it, that it is there because it is useful to be able to set your drop exactly where you want it to stop at so it doesn't go too far. And if I had it, this would be draft control to make sure that the implement would stay level. Like if I was tilling, for example, or plowing, it would keep the implement at the same level. And this is holes for three remotes if I had any remotes, of which I don't on this tractor because I don't need them. And a nice convenient cup holder. This is big enough to fit my 30 ounce Yeti Rambler. So that should give you an idea how big that cup holder is. If you have a Yeti Rambler, that is, 30 ounce. And there's also a 12 volt plug back here for plugging in, you know, a, a remote light that you can plug in with a cigarette lighter or a phone charger or whatever you might want to plug in. And there's the toolbox that I was mentioning earlier. And the pouch for the manual is right behind the seat, conveniently located. And as you can see underneath the seat, there's the safety switch for when you get off the seat. And you can see the spring and shock mechanism located right there. So, that's a quick overview of everything that the, the 1735M for Massey offers. It's an extremely luxurious tractor, in my opinion, for the price. And Coyote came out to be around 22000 and that was without any extra implements, but it had that was including the front loader. So all said and done, this tractor came out to be uh, twenty-five thousand altogether when I included a six-foot box blade, which is not here yet, and this six-foot cutter. But going on to this real fast, this is a very nice cutter. I, but I only got to use it for thirty minutes, so I can't really say much else about it yet. But just for people who want to buy any implements in the future don't make the mistake i did and just run them assuming that everything is good because even brand new things can go wrong and the thing that went wrong with this was that the bolt that holds the slip clutch to that shaft right there was not bolted in the nut came right out of the shroud and fell out right there and then the bolt came out shortly afterwards and it completely separated and as you can see just a few minutes of doing that and it gouged the metal inside of there pretty well and I can't get it back on. So whenever they come out here tomorrow to de deliver my box blade, they're going to file that down and get it back on the shaft for me and they're going to put it back together with a bolt and a locking nut. As you can see, this is not a locking nut. So it's very easy for something like that to back out. They're going to fix that problem for me tomorrow and they're going to make sure that doesn't happen again by replacing them themselves. But just for future reference for yourself. If you do want to buy anything that moves, which in this case spins, I would definitely recommend checking all your nuts and bolts before you run it to save you from this kind of trouble. But otherwise, it seems like a very well built cutter. And it's nice that the dealership sells the Bush Hog brand by default with these tractors. It's a very good setup. I like them. And they were sold by Hobo Tractor out of uh, Ellisville, Florida. And they're a very nice dealership, very friendly. Totally recommend them. But anyway, that is my total overview of the tractor. It's only got two hours on it so far. But I love it so far, and I hope it gives me many years of reliable service. Just wanted to quickly cover a few reasons why I went with the Massey Ferguson over my two biggest contenders, which were Coyote and John Deere, and Kubota, which I'll consider as a third but I knocked them off at the list first as a contender, mainly because the most comparable tractor to this was the Kubota Grand L 3560. And while it is one of the nicest tractors I have ever been on to test drive, it was just too expensive. The lowest they could do for me with a six foot cutter and box blade was $33,000. And that was with incentives. And they told me they could not do any better. And there, you know, I heard Kubota insurance is very good, but the Kubota insurance wanted $2,600. And it was just, a, when you add all that together, it was just too much money. So I knocked them off the list first. Then the next comparable that I went with was Coyote, because it was the cheapest. But I found out when you do a tit for tat on features versus what you get, 
this tractor wound up being a bigger tractor and a nicer tractor with more features for about the same price when you don't include anything else except the front end loader and what it comes standard with and the ver the exact model i compared it to was the ck 3510 se because the se comes with cruise control and a uh, linked pedal the linked pedal on this is auto uh it, it's always on so i'm it is you have to get used to it, but once you get used to it, it's honestly no different than any other tractor. So it's okay that it's always on. Just keep that in mind that it does not turn off. But if you need RPMs up, you just simply turn the RPMs up with the manual throttle, and it will stay up. And it will only accelerate past those RPMs if you push the pedal down far enough to go past the RPMs you set. But that's why I still went with this over the Coyote. And ultimately, the reason I also went with this over the John Deere, which the most comparable model to this one was the 4044M. Now, I know the 44M, the 4044M had almost nine more horsepower than this model because that's the lowest uh, horsepower they offer. But the 3038R, which is the, the closest to this from the, in the three series below it, the size was just too wide of a difference. The three series, even whether M or excuse me, whether E or R, this was considerably larger than those. So I felt that the 4044M was the true comparison to this tractor, regardless of the horsepower difference. And this tractor was an equal match to it in size and strength. And I found it a lot more uh, cost effective for me to pick up this 35 horsepower model versus the John Deere's. And it, the John Deere came out to be $29,000, and that included the six-foot cutter and six-foot box blade, which I bought with this. And this trailer, and this, excuse me, this entire package was $25,000, including the tractor, the cutter, and the box blade. So a $4,000 difference, and that was with the M-Series John Deere, which doesn't even come standard with cruise control or the guards on the lights and... um also the the nice feature where you can set the maximum speed of the hydrostat and other little niceties like that or like linked pedal that's another one the john deere m does not have you have to get the r which made it exceptionally more expensive so just a lot of little things added up to make me want this over that so that is why i chose this particular tractor in my opinion because it offered the most bang for the buck and i really like that part about it and it's a very comfortable tractor and it's a massey ferguson so generally in most cases you can't go wrong but thank you